Chapter 3, Family Influences on Child Health Promotion. This is going to be a very quick overview of this chapter. So what is family? Well, family is whatever an individual considers it to be. Now, a good descriptive term for that may be to say household or ask a child who lives in your house with you because family can be a little confusing, particularly if they're not in a traditional family. So what kind of families do we see? Well, there is the traditional nuclear family where you have two parents and their children. We see a lot of blended families where you have at least one step-parent with step-siblings or half-siblings. Extended families are also common where you have at least one parent, um, their children, and other individuals who live in the household. Often those other individuals are relatives, but they don't have to be. There's also single parent families. This is where we have one parent and their children. And kind of a twist on that would be the binuclear family, which we see a lot nowadays. In divorce, parents often are splitting custody. Um, so there's not a single custodial parent. They both have equal custody. And we would call that um, binuclear family as opposed to single parent, because they're not being raised by just one parent. Uh, Same-sex families, you will see at the hospital uh, common law ties with uh, lesbians or with gay men who are raising children. And foster families, this actually comes later in the book, but I moved it up here because it seemed appropriate. This is children who are placed in an approved living environment that's away from their family of origin. And those can be temporary or permanent. So family roles and relationships. You know, in America, we are in a state of flux. Um, parental roles are not all that well defined. They're really changing. We've got women working outside of the home. We've got fathers taking a much more active role in raising their children. Um, so our roles aren't real clearly defined anymore. Family is what teaches children culture uh, where families have their rules that they want the children's children to uh, abide by um, and they use both positive and negative sac sanctions in order to get the children to conform to follow those um, appropriate behaviors that the family sets down. Now family size and configuration there are pros and cons to large families and to small families and to having children close together and spaced out but there are differences like I said, there could be pros and cons to all of them, but in smaller families, kids are able to get a little more individualized attention. Um, we know only children tend to be more mature. They tend to do better on um, many uh, exam kind of settings, but large families, because there is more of a group emphasis, people have to learn to work together. They have to learn to compromised. Um, so there are skills that you can learn from either one. Parenting styles are usually divided into three different categories. The di dictatorial, which is also authoritarian, and this is where parents try and control their children's behavior and attitudes through unquestioned rules and experiences. So the children are not allowed to ask questions. They have to do what they're told and they're not necessarily told why, they're just told to do it. Permissive or laissez-faire is the exact opposite of that. This is parents who don't believe children need a lot of, of structure and strict rules, that children should be allowed to experience on their own, to make their own um, decisions and learn things um, you know, through their own e exploration. In between the two would be your authoritative or your democratic uh, parenting. And this, parents do try and direct the child's behavior by setting some rules, but the reason for those rules are explained. It's not just because I said so. There's reasons behind them. There are uh, consequences for not following those, um, but they're usually not quite as rigid. Limit setting and discipline. Discipline, just defining it, it means to teach, or it's a set of rules that govern conduct. 
Usually when we talk about discipline though, we're talking about the action that's taken for non-compliance. So we would say you discipline a child when they, um, you know, hit their little brother. Limit setting means establishing rules or guidelines for behavior. Now kids need both limit setting and rules. Um, they're positive and they're necessary. Children need to know what's expected of them so that they can feel free and safe and secure and play without worrying because they know where the boundary is of what their behavior is allowed to be. They don't have to worry they're going to be in trouble because they haven't crossed that line. Or you have some of the strong-willed children who are always going to have to test and see where that line is and then they can go back to playing without the hitting or the throwing or the things that aren't allowed in that family. And that's the end of this chapter.